The Italian Grand Prix is over and yet again it was victory for Max Verstappen in the Red Bull as he made it 10 race wins in a row. But this was the closest that any team all year long had come to actually beating the Red Bull team. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the data from the Grand Prix as we do a data analysis from Monza. Now let's get into the video. As usual I'm going to be talking about the teams such as McLaren, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on so stick around for that. The Italian Grand Prix dished up one of the most exciting races of the year as Monza delivered a race that may have not been filled with wall-to-wall -wall overtaking like Zanvoort, but it did instead produce a race which had on-track battling up and down the field all race long. And because of this, we really got to see the drivers push the limits of the rules of racing to the complete limit. But what do I mean by this? Well, there was not overall on-track overtaking like in Zanvoort where there was an incredible 188 on-track overtakes. But in Monza, there was only 31 on-track overtakes. However, I would say those 31 overtakes were a lot more exciting than the 188 at Zanvoort because none of the overtakes were easy. But why were the overtakes not so easy? You would expect that due to the amount of long straights and two long DRS zones that Monza would be filled with overtakes. However, this is not the case. And the reason for that is because at Monza, the teams opt to run very low downforce. And because there is low downforce, that means that the DRS itself is less effective. Essentially, there is less drag to dump, making DRS itself less powerful. And how can we see this? Well, to show it up, I have brought up two laps from Monza, and we're going to be using Charles Leclerc for this example. The two laps in question are lap 8, when he is within one second of Max Verstappen in the Red Bull, and the second lap is lap 12, when he had fallen out of DRS range. Here you can see a change in top speed, but the difference is only around 10 kilometers per hour, which really is not that significant. Also remember, lap 8, he would have not only had DRS, but he would have had a stronger toe by being right behind both Max and Carlos. This should give some slight insight into why there was not too many overtakes in Monza. With that in mind though, what teams had a good race and what teams struggled with the Italian Grand Prix? We already know that Alpine was struggling with Monza from both my practice and qualifying data analysis videos, which you can find if you haven't seen already on my channel. But another team that struggled in the race was the Haas team, which probably shouldn't be a surprise at this point. They typically struggle at every single race when it comes to race distances, due to how hard Haas are on tyre wear. But even so, this weekend they were particularly bad. And to show that, I've brought up the times of Hulkenberg in the Haas, Liam Lawson in the Alfa Tauri, and also Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. And what can we see? Well, what we can see is that once again, it seems like Haas just cannot maintain the pace during a stint. You can see here during the hard tyre stint, Haas clearly lose pace faster than Lawson does in the Alfa Tauri, as the Haas works its tyres too hard. And also at this moment, I'd just like to give a little bit of a shout out to Liam Lawson. He had an incredible race in the Alfa Tauri, despite being a standing driver, and we got to see him pull off some brilliant overtakes, such as this one on Hulkenberg's teammate, Kevin Magnussen. I would like to see Liam get a full-time opportunity on the grid in 2024 for Alfa Tauri, or whatever they're going to be called next year. I believe it's supposed to be Hugo Boss Bulls Racing, which just sounds Ball. So with that in mind then, what teams had a strong race? Well, one team that had a strong race was Alex Albon in the Williams. I guess it's kind of a driver that had a strong race, not a team. But yes, he put on a defensive drive of his life to hold on to 7th place in the Williams and score some very valuable points. To do this, he had to hold off Lando Norris in the McLaren, who was a clearly the faster driver. But the question is, how did Albon manage this? Well, to give some indication, I've gone to lap 41 of the race to see what we can learn when we look at the two times. Here you can see that Lando does have a top speed edge, however this is because of DRS, and the top speed advantage is only around 8 kilometers per hour, which meant that there was not a great deal that Lando could do. Not only this, but because Williams is faster in a straight line when DRS is not active, Albon is actually faster in a straight line, which you can see on the X to the first corner, and that Albon actually is able to pull away from Lando, despite Norris being in the slipstream of the Williams driver. This weekend was a perfect race circuit for Williams, and they maximised this opportunity by scoring a good number of points. 
The next race at Singapore though will be much more difficult for the team and it is likely that they will struggle. However, the new layout at Singapore could maybe help them a little bit more with the removal of several tight corners, but we will just have to wait and see how they get on. I just want to say that if you are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams and let's start with McLaren. For McLaren, the Italian Grand Prix was a bit more of a tricky race than anticipated and the main reason was that both drivers spent the majority of the race stuck behind the blue rocket ship known as a Williams. And with their low top speed, there was not really anything that they could have done and therefore they spent the whole race stuck. For Lando and Piastri, their race came undone when the Williams stopped before them. This is because, as this graph shows, Albon was slower than Norris before stopping, but on the fresh tyres, he was able to pump in some strong lap times and maintain position. This race was always going to be a trickier race for the McLaren team, but next time out at Singapore, things should go a lot better, as the return of high downforce will be, of course, prevalent at Singapore, and this is where McLaren are strongest. For Aston Martin, the Italian Grand Prix was always going to be a difficult race as well, but still, Fernando Alonso was able to score some points, however it was only a couple of points, but his teammate Lance Stroll finished the race all the way down in P16. The Aston Martin car just did not have the pace of the low downforce circuit. They may have fixed some of their top speed issues from the beginning of the season, but the car is just better suited to high downforce circuits. Alonso had an opportunity to beat Hamilton during this race, but the Aston just lacked pace, and you can see that when we compare the two drivers over the race distance. Had Alonso not gotten stuck behind Albon and Norris, he could have potentially taken the fight to Lewis and scored a few more points. But for Aston Martin, they will now be looking forward to the next race at Singapore, where they hope to be back in the fight on the podium. For Ferrari, they put on a show, and were arguably the closest competition that Red Bull has faced all year long, as Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc took the fight to Verstappen and also Sergio Perez. And when we look at the times of Sainz, Leclerc and Verstappen, you can see just how close things were between the three drivers. Verstappen arguably always did have the pace over the Ferraris, but they were strong in their defensive drive. But unfortunately for Ferrari, once again, it came down to tyre wear. And once the tyre wear kicked in for Sainz, who did struggle more on his tyres than Leclerc did in this race, then it was game over. Verstappen was able to pass Sainz and open up the gap at a rapid rate. On the second stint, you can see that Verstappen did have the edge, but early on, Sainz actually had the edge over both Verstappen and Leclerc. However, for Sainz, once again, he used his tyres harder than Charles did, and this meant that by the end of the race, we got to see an incredible battle where Sainz had very little tyre left, but he was able to very aggressively defend from his teammate and take the podium. For Ferrari, they can be very happy with the result from the race as they now move into third in the Constructors' Championship. However, the next race at Singapore will likely be a much more difficult race, and in the heat of the night, I think we might see them struggle with tyre wear a little bit more. For Mercedes, the Italian Grand Prix was a race where they just did not have the pace of the two teams in front of them. However, they did have more pace than the cars that were behind them, and really they were pretty anonymous, apart from both drivers landing themselves with penalties that didn't really affect the results of their race, and came by both drivers making what was essentially fairly silly errors. Russell overtook the Alpine off track, despite them being in two completely different races, and Hamilton somewhat unnecessarily came across Piastri and ruined his race by causing damage to his front wing. And to show that they just never had the pace, I brought up the pace of Hamilton, Russell and Sainz. Really, the only time they had the pace advantage over Sainz was after Carlos had cooked his tyres at the end of the race. Next time out at Singapore, it'll be interesting to see how Mercedes get on, as street racers are not always their strongest points, but, of course, the cars come a long way from earlier on in the season. And finally for Red Bull, the Italian Grand Prix was yet another win for the team. However, this was by some distance their most difficult fight of the year, as Ferrari took the fight to them in the first stint, and Perez once again had to come through the field. 
And when we take a look at the times of Perez and Verstappen, you can see one or two very interesting things from the end of the race. Verstappen towards the end of the race really had to slow down the pace, and for Max, he was kind of lucky that Leclerc was not able to pass signs, and also that the race was shortened by two laps. Because if these did not happen, then there was a chance that Verstappen wouldn't have won a record break in 10 races in a row. Red Bull lacked a bit of straight line speed efficiency this weekend. However, next time at Singapore, it's likely that they will be back to very dominant winning ways. So, what did we learn from this race? Williams' top speed made them a match for the top teams in F1 at tracks like Monza. McLaren still don't have a strong low downforce package and Ferrari have incredible efficiency when it comes to straight line performance. And finally, Red Bull is simply the best team in all conditions. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.